Christian is um, the co-founder and director of Chronic Pain Research Alliance. She is uh, the co-founder, like I said, and director of that. Uh, she's lived also with chronic pain most of her life, and she's dedicated her life to be an advocate for the acceleration of rigorous multidisciplinary pain research and the translation of research findings into meaningful change for people with chronic disease. So with that, Christian, I welcome you to the session this morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Carl, and to the other organizers for including me today um, on this critically important topic and also for stressing the importance of um, including the perspective of people who have lived experience uh, with these conditions. Next slide, please. As you just mentioned, we know that America has become a nation of chronic disease. As you said, six in 10 adults have one, at least one chronic disease. It's a leading cause of death and disability and a huge driver of our ever increasing healthcare costs. Next slide, please. And interestingly, chronic pain um, is a prevalent costly and it's an often ignored chronic disease that coexists with many others. Um, the historic 2011 uh, National Academies report on chronic pain uh, found that it can be a disease in and of itself, that it has a distinct pathology with changes throughout the nervous system that can worsen with time, and that it can constitute a serious separate disease entity. We know that 100 million um, U.S. adults uh, have chronic pain. It's costing us over um, half a trillion dollars a year. And interestingly, um, in listening to session one, um, Russ's presentation and others, it was interesting that I could almost, with the exception of maybe one or two comments, I could substitute chronic pain in there for everything that was stated about the problems that plague other chronic diseases. Um, we have really very little information about the underlying mechanisms and causes of chronic pain. Um, animal models are poor, translation is poor, the research investment is poor. Um, we've had very few new drugs or other non-pharmacologic um, approvals for chronic pain. There's an explosion of therapies on the market, but we have very little data to say what works for whom. And of course, our healthcare system is failing people with these conditions because we don't have team-based interdisciplinary care. Next slide, please. But actually, what we now know is it becomes even more complex. We're not just dealing in America with one chronic disease, but the most common chronic condition is now multimorbidity. And this is, this is it's already complex enough and we're dealing with a nation that's becoming one of chronic disease, but now having actual multiple chronic diseases. Next slide. We know that approximately one in four Americans um, have multiple chronic conditions, including one in 15 children, which is increasing. And those over 65 years old, three in four have multiple chronic conditions. These folks are at increased risk for mortality and poorer functioning. And 66% of our total healthcare spending is associated with multiple chronic conditions. Next slide. But ironically, none of our systems are really designed to address not only the complexity of one chronic disease with a few exceptions, but especially multimorbidity. If we start all the way at the beginning um, in terms of disease classification is by signs and symptoms for the most part, not on underlying mechanisms of disease. Um, our animal models and basic research are not built around comorbidity or multimorbidity. The pharmaceutical industry is geared towards what happens at regulatory stages, which is around ICD disease classification. Um, clinical trials are usually not powered high enough to uh, understand the heterogeneity within one chronic disease, and they usually exclude those that have multiple chronic conditions. As we know, our healthcare system is failing those with chronic illness. Um, with limited amount of time and an acute care model. And of course, there's not incentives in the payer side um, to cover multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary care that's needed for chronic disease. Next slide. So where does this leave people who have chronic illnesses? And today my task has been to kind of share with you a little bit about the patient journey. Um, you know, I thought about my own, my own history in dealing with, with chronic pain and other conditions of the last 30 years, and I thought, how could I possibly put that into a 10 or 15 minute presentation, because there's so much complexity that goes with it. But I do think there are common themes, um, not just within chronic pain, but across, across chronic disease, and I thought it'd be helpful to share those with you this morning. So the goal really comes from, sh uh, really shifts from finding a cure and focusing on loss to determining how to live well with chronic disease. Next slide, please. And I thought it would be helpful to um, 
address this from the uh, perspective of wellness. So wellness is defined as the quality or state of being healthy in body and mind, especially as the result of deliberate effort. And these eight dimensions of wellness have been proposed, you know, physical, emotional, spiritual, environmental, vocational. Um, and I thought it would just be helpful through the lens of patience and art to help you and to kind of guide us this morning, trying to take a deeper dive and understand some of those things, some of the issues that patients with, with chronic disease experience. Next slide. So this is a piece by Tanya Patterson. If you look on the lower left-hand side of the slide, this is what we might see in a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis, right? So there may be some swelling of the joints that we notice, So you may notice that someone is, you know, rubbing their hands and, you know, and expressing some kind of outward or inward pain, but we really have no idea what that actually feels like. Um, and I love this piece because it really gives us a visual representation of what she's physically experiencing. And she said, the pain of RA can make it feel like if I move my hand, everything will disintegrate. The flames represent searing hot pain in the joints. The cracking represents the slow destruction of my body by this disease. And the pain, like my drawings, becomes my world. So you can see just in that short, you know, short description and this visual representation, the physical suffering and kind of attack on physical wellness that's going on um, within, within Tanya's existence. Next slide. You know, and a lot of people with chronic disease also uh, talk about this theme of being able to think clearly, to learn, to function vocationally. And this person who is anonymous said, the pain is bad enough, but I can't think straight either. My family can't count on me and I can't count on myself. Next slide. Catherine in the self-portrait says, I feel like my body is being eaten by acid and disintegrating. The mask is a happy face I have to put on for the world. The darkness is where I am mentally. The bright lights are painful to me, but must be endured for the sake of my public image. So you can really poignantly can see what the physical and emotional suffering is that goes on here, as well as this theme of having to kind of put on a happy or normal face for outward existence and to be able to function in the world. Next slide. Christine in this, in this piece talks about the swirl of life and the interconnectedness of her conditions. She said, my illnesses are all connected and intertwined. They are confusing and do not have any definite answers or cures. I'm not sure where the illnesses will take me next. The depression from the constant pain and fear looks like this painting. And this is another common theme that really runs true with many people with chronic illnesses, is fear of the future, the unknown of the future, and the unknown really of understanding the interconnectedness of their conditions and what to do about them. Next slide, please. In this piece called Hiding, um, she really talks about, again, the isolation and the outward appearance of looking normal. She said, when I walk down the street, I portray the image of a young, healthy girl. Yet when you open me, the box, there's a world drowning in constant struggle and pain. No one can see past the outside layer, therefore nothing beyond the surface exists to anyone but me. Next slide, please. In this piece by Susan Gostein, she further reiterates the isolation. She said to live in pain is to live in isolation. And she goes further to talk about the lack of ability um, to be able to really communicate through words or otherwise what she's really experiencing in her struggle with chronic illness. And she said, pain is a solitary truth that defies communication. It's subjective and it's resistant to language and measurement. It's another theme that really runs through in trying to help other people um, understand what it is, the complexity of what you experience with your illness. Next slide. And this piece called No Way Out by Chris Merkel. Um, I included this because it really, you know, again, this idea of unattainable medical care for the majority of people in our country is so very true. I mean, some people are very, um, you know, in some conditions, few select conditions, and in some areas, people are really fortunate to have access to multidisciplinary care with a team of specialists. For, but for the majority of people in our country, this is just not available to them. And you can see, um, in this piece where the lower half of his body is kind of stuck in a safe that to him represents this unattainable medical care while he's trying to survive with the pain that he's experienced and the type of treatments, the drugs in this case, that he's being given for his illness. Next slide. 
And this as well, patients talk about, you know, the ever increasing weight of the world. He says the day-to-day -day feeling of trying to stay above while what feels like the weight of the world is bringing you down. And you can see in this piece that his feet are like cement blocks, but his legs are becoming smaller and smaller as he tries to carry both the pain that he's experiencing that you can see through this, with the skewer going through the lower part of his back and the weight of the world on top of his shoulders. Next slide. In Living with Chronic Illness and Pain by Judith Rowe, she talks about the isolation and the imprisonment that people with pain and chronic illness feel. She said, we see and hear what the outside world is offering, but we are tied to our homes and our diseases. We are often unable to take part in any activities outside of our sick room. This leaves us feeling sad, depressed, hopeless, and helpless. And you can see the pieces of paper on the floor that say family and friends, independence, bank account, career, home, travel, dreams. And this is very true to many people who are living with chronic illness. Next slide. And this piece by Corbin Lewis, he really talks about um, the inadequacy of the uh, measurements that we have to try to gauge disease, where he says no number, and he's referring to that on a pain scale, can gauge the amount of time lost, the sleepless nights, the relationships gone, the faithless and scared and unable to take care of myself. And this piece deals more so with the struggle to maintain faith, which is another com uh, complex theme that runs through uh, with chronic disease. Next slide. So I hope you can see just by those uh, few pieces that really chronic disease wages war against every single dimension of wellness. Um, and I underline in the definition, especially as the result of deliberate effort, because um, what we experience, and I think about this in my own journey, you know, is that this 30 years for me and for anyone who's living with chronic disease is a roller coaster, right? And if you look at the, the picture on the left side where there's three different levels. In the beginning, when you're first diagnosed with the condition, you may have some, you know, obviously you're concerned and you're upset, but you kind of have this motivation, you know, you're motivated to get better, to find a cure, to find the right doctor, to find the right healthcare resource. Um, and you have this ball and chain kind of attached to your leg, but you're still motivated to, to move forward. But over time, as you try new therapies, as you see new um, physicians or other healthcare providers, um, as you deal with the psychological and the emotional and, and all the other um, impact that, that chronic illness has on your life, you go through this very um, complex roller coaster. And over time, that ball and chain, the weight of that ball and chain gets heavier and heavier, and it just gets harder and harder to move forward. Next slide. So what happens to a nation when it becomes one of chronic disease? And I think we can see just from you know, these few pieces that you know, if we don't change our healthcare system, that this impacts every single dimension of wellness, which obviously impacts our productivity as a nation, our health and well-being, wealth and economy of a nation. Next slide. So how do we change? Obviously, that's why we're here today. Um, and I love this quote by George Orwell when he says, one's got to change the system or one changes nothing. And we talked about this um, in the presentations in the first session, that we really have to look at the underlying change that needs to take place in the system uh, and not address this disease by disease by disease, because we're not going to get the change that we need for all of the conditions if we continue to do that. Next slide. So I liked the idea that Susan proposed in the last um, presentation, where she said we really need to look at each level uh, of the entire R&D spectrum, and we need to identify what needs to change with each, within each system to across, address chronic disease and multiple chronic conditions, and then who and how do we incentivize this. Next slide. And that's obviously going to take all of us working together to enact change. Um, including you know, all of us who represent um, separate disease entities working together as patient and advocacy organizations. Thanks so much for your time today. Wow, thank you, Christian. I um, can't thank you enough for setting the platform today for our discussion. Um, you, you took us on a, on a very, very small slither of a patient's journey and the insights of how that impacts every part of well-being. And, and I couldn't think of a better way to start our discussions today.